Welcome to Pride in Promotion, the podcast that celebrates every color under the rainbow and dives deep into the heart of marketing, exploring how innovation and diversity can drive business growth. I'm Joe Federico, your host on this exciting journey and owner of J. Federico Marketing. Every week, we reveal the magic behind effective brand storytelling and examine how inclusive marketing can transform your business landscape. So get ready because this episode is packed with insights you won't want to miss. And one. Hey everybody, I am Joe Federico of J Federico Marketing and the host of the Pride and Promotion podcast. Today we have a very special guest, Senor Scary. Jerry is on the show. Jerry, welcome to the Pride and Promotion cast. How are you today? I'm doing swell. Thank you very much for asking. Uh, so we want to know, I mean, we, so we've spoken, we met each other because through social media and we can get to that story in a moment, but I want to hear about you and how you got the name or, you know, how you uh, evolved and are currently evolving Senor Scary. So the floor okay. is yours. Excellent. Well, um, you know, I started this uh, love of Halloween when I was just a wee tot and um, I decided uh, once I kind of graduated from college and said, I'm going to do something with a web. Uh, it was early on in the web uh, and I, I built a website and I started a newsletter and got a bunch of people following. And then I said, Hey, I'm going to, I'm going to actually develop like an actual website. So for two years, I did all the photography and writing and everything. And I built and launched this website uh, in, uh, I think it was 2009 called my scary Halloween.com. And it was a, it was fun. It was, it was a hit. It was, there was nothing like it because it had a bunch of different things. I reached out to Halloween authors and I reached out to people that I could find. Uh, at that time, literally Facebook had just launched. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think we were past Friendster, past MySpace and kind of really getting into the, the next evolution of social media. So word spread fast and I got to talk to a lot of people. And then, um, Flash forward a few years, um, and I, I I changed jobs, and I started a college job working at a college, and my perspective changed about everything. I uh, in two short years I went through a super massive fast uh, evolution, and in that evolution I realized, gosh. Uh, here I am, a gay proud man, having been at that time married uh, 10 years, I believe, wow. and um, not myself online. Um, I liked my brand, my myscaryhalloween.com, but it wasn't me. It was uh, something that I was hiding behind because I was sort of deathly afraid of saying, hey, I'm Mexican or I'm gay Ooh, uh -huh. on online. And so then I said, you know what, I, this needs to change. This needs to change. And so I decided uh, I'm going to rebrand everything. And yes, I have all these followers and I have all these things, but um, it's not who I am. And it's not true to who I, who I want to be. Wow. And so Senior Scary was born. Um, I was able to nab that URL right away. I'm like, that's who I am. I'm SeniorScary.com. Mm -hmm. And everything about it changed. My flavor changed. My logo changed. Uh, the way I interacted with folks, uh, that little cute little uh, emoticon for the uh, gay flag came on to everything. Uh, and I connected with people because of that. And uh, one of the first stops that I made was on uh, gay Twitter and gay horror Twitter and queer uh, horror Twitter you know, Twitter. Mm -hmm. And I made a bunch of friends and I said, Hey, I'm loud. I'm proud. I'm gay. And I love horror. And we all did. And, um, I got to write a few articles for, uh, gaily dreadful.com and, uh, developed a really nice kinship with a community and, and, and loved it. And then of course, COVID hit and everything was, everything went south. Yeah. So here we are now as the next evolution comes up of <laughs> Where where does Senor Scary go from here? I would like to know where where he goes from from here. So me too. When you started this, oh nine ish, you know, besides being on really on Twitter and your website, what other platforms were you utilizing 
to get the word out about your first website? Oh gosh, I we as as they launched, I was on them. So when Instagram came online, I was on Instagram. Mm -hmm. When uh, I was on Blogger already, because Blogger has been here since before time, I think. Um, (laughs) So I was on Blogger first. I did a blog there, and part of my site came from that blog. Um, And it it, it was literally like, as something launches, there I am. As Thread launches, there I am. Mm -hmm. Uh, As TikTok launches bigger, there I am. Uh, Snapchat, I didn't care for. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But everything else, I was constantly keeping my on. Even YouTube, I had like a few. I was not at the time. I was not into video. Uh, I have since taught myself video, and then now just got a, a associate's degree in film. But um, congratulations! <laughs> thank you. It's been a very long undertaking, especially when you're full time. You know, sure. Working. Sure. Um, anywho, so now I even have a YouTube and a Vimeo, and so I. I I did Pinterest as well until Pinterest became absolutely irrelevant, I think. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Um, So everything that's come out, I've tried. And from it, I've gotten a little bit of audience here and there and uh, just keep gathering them from the different sites. Um, But now I have, you know, and the good thing is that I have the same handle across all social media. So if you know at Senior Scary Jerry, you will find me on any social media platform, (laughs) which makes it super easy. You certainly will. I yeah. certainly did. I found you because yeah. I was only a few weeks ago looking to promote my book, you know, my uh, Voodoo Juice series, mm-hmm. being a queer horror author and fan myself. And I said, hmm, Senor Scary, who is that? And I pretty much knew even before speaking with you one on one and getting to know you more, having you on the podcast, and hopefully we work together in the future as we discussed, you know, potentially. But I knew the persona and who it was, what it was, what you stood for before even going onto your website, which I thought was amazing as far as building your brand. Awesome. But, but of course, you know, power of social media, and then we followed each other after our conversation, and and then, as they say, the, race, the rest is history. But why Halloween, what specifically back before you started the website, really got your blood... Uh, running cold for all things spooky and Halloween. Cause I want to know where this persona originally derives from. Um, I I've, I've loved horror all my life and I've loved Halloween all my life from the very beginning. Um, growing up in uh, West uh, Southwest Texas, um, there was Halloween, but there really wasn't Halloween. It's a predominantly Latino uh, Mexican culture and M- Mexico doesn't really celebrate Halloween. Uh, it's not a, it's, it's Halloween is a, a, a America is an American cultural holiday. Mm. That is something that is, was made and has been fostered here. It's now spreading through the world, but it was something that is completely uniquely ours. And it's also one of the few holidays that has, um, no, uh, government kind of association, yes. no religious association. It's a truly cultural holiday. Uh, and as a Mexican American and, and me and my indigenous roots, we like to tell a good tale, uh, you know, a good folk tale. And Halloween is nothing but a big folk tale, right? Like when you look at its origins and how it got here and uh, how it became when it became, um, it's that folklore. It's that it's that storyteller um, um, aspect to it that really appeals to me. Um, and even even like as a as a person who loves Halloween, that is my main goal is to tell the story of Halloween and me and how I fit in Halloween and how my greater culture, my greater you know, Mexican and Latino culture fit in, as a piece in that. Cause Mexicans celebrate death. Americans don't really celebrate death in the way that mm-hmm. we do. And it's a very interesting um, dynamic to have this holiday that essentially celebrates death. And, right. um, that's that to me is a very interesting aspect to it. Um, yeah. Will that persona evolve even more so now that you came out of the coffin per se, right? With saying more about your heritage and more about being a queer man, uh, being an author, being a creative. Where do you see your persona going in the next two, six, 12, 24 months because of now that you're more of yourself? and speaking your truth on the website and beyond. 
Um, I think one of the the things that my own journey is kind of like learning about my own culture and about all of our stories. And we have a lot of stories. Um, there are so many, uh, there's so much folklore um, and it's all very spooky and very creepy and very interesting. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's rooted in something. What is it rooted in? What is the, what is the base of these stories? Are they, are they moral morality tales? Are they cautionary tales? Um, wh what is the purpose for these folk tales? And I think as I'm learning about myself and my indigenous roots in um, Mexico, I'm studying all these wonderful folklore and how they vary from region to region. There's one called La Llorona, which is very popular. It's the weeping woman. It's the, mm -hmm. the woman in white who walks along the riverbanks, uh, screaming, I, mis hijos, oh, my children, looking for her children that she killed in the river. Um, and when you look at that story, yeah, that's creepy. But you keep searching that and, and, and researching that and going, wait, how did this woman get to drown her children? Mm -hmm. and you see how it's tied to um, the colonization of Mexico, the uh, enslavement of the indigenous people. The, yeah. like, there's all these layers, right? And so different, different uh, regions have different variations on that, but it all kind of comes down to the same thing. And um, I find that all very fascinating. So I think as I explore myself and my culture, I'm going to continue looking at these stories because I think there's, there's the hidden truths um, of our society in these stories. We dismiss them as, oh, they're just simple little stories for children. Mm -hmm. But there's <laughs> truth in these and there's something to be learned from them. And I think that's my next kind of like, my next big thing is to bridge that gap between what is, where does the story begin? And where does this, was this, where does the truth behind that? Sure. And how does it fit in a greater uh, cultural sense? while sharing your own truth and becoming more comfortable in that same sense. Yeah. While you're evolving the persona across all the social media platforms. Yeah. When you took to queer horror Twitter, which is now X, Twitter X, whichever um, current iteration you want to um, accept, <laughs> it's kind of a wild west right now. Uh, politically, we can get into that at a later time uh, mm -hmm. or a different conversation, different podcast. But I still am holding out for Twitter. I hope it, uh, it it continues to evolve. I think it's currently going through a renaissance. But back in the day, it was at its height when you were connecting with these different pieces of the community based around horror. What drew you to the platform? And are you still on the platform connecting with these communities and sharing the word, the gospel of Senor Scary and Halloween? Like, how's that working out for you? I mean, the platform right now feels like a, kind of like an ex-boyfriend you see across the bar drinking and you're like, oh, those are good times with that, with that platform, but will, yeah. it ever, will it ever work out again? I don't think so. Right. And every so often I'll go and it's, it's a good night and then you, you move on. I, I don't feel that it's right right now. Every time I go on, I feel like it's a cesspool, but mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hey, you can clean a cesspool. Right. Mm -hmm. There's additives. Anywho. Um, so yeah, it was, it was, um, if the, if the question was how, how was it like then, right. As opposed to now, is that kind of like what you're asking? Yeah. Yeah. How did you, what, what originally drew you to the platform then? And then, and then how receptive were people to speaking about horror at its height of the platform? Um, so what I loved about it is that I could um, get all uppity on people's, um, you know, socials because I love film and I would go to Twitter and be like, excuse me about your film. I have comments. I yeah. have questions. You didn't fulfill this, this thing in this. And like, I would always be chatting with uh, directors and writers and yeah. Um, I noticed that, that these hashtags were like, oh, gay Twitter or horror Twitter. And I'm like, mm -hmm. what are these things? Oh, they're communities. Mm -hmm. And once you start getting into those communities, you kind of see, oh, there's like like-minded people. And what drew me further and further in is that I kept connecting with people who I don't have in my life. Like I, horror is really hard for people to like. Yeah. And I love it. So uh, finding people who love horror around me is is difficult. And here here's this complete network of people who love horror and want to talk about it and want to dissect 
these in you know specific scenes and why would a writer do this and um it helped me as well because i'm i'm a writer in in some aspects and i'm like mm -hmm. being able to connect with a writer and, and have them say the producer had the final say on that and that's why we had to do that scene that way right oh it's a business got it yes <laughs> it's a business mm -hmm. and so it was very interesting to kind of understand that and in and, and that actually informed my future self as a as a filmmaker to be like well we're out of time we're out of money we can't get that last shot so we're gonna wrap it here um, right and so it, it really helped me even if future future me helped me understand how the business works so it was a very interesting education for me everything is about education my whole persona is about education um i work in education i want to teach people about halloween i want to learn about halloween i want to learn about culture i want to share that um and twitter used to be a really good place to have a sharing of ideas right i still don't believe twitter is completely in the coffin i don't think it's dead yet I think it's close. You know, you heard it here first, folks. Uh, we currently do not educate people on Twitter you know, because of what's happening politically. I, I, I took a stance, you know, against that for now. Uh, but I, I've been on Twitter since its inception. And back in the day, it wasn't the Wild West. It was beautifully crafted, organic, open, accepting, for the most part, platform where you can educate, as you had said. And you could have these deeper conversations and become less naive and and get into the brains of the creatives, authors and actors and directors and producers. And as, as you had said, especially the queer horror community was so prominent. And where do you feel that that community moved to? Which platform do you think that they're on now that you've noticed? And have you moved there yourself? Um, Joe, that is such a good question because I don't know where they went. Mm -hmm. I've been looking. I looked at Blue Sky. I looked at um, Threads. I looked at, I mean, there's bits and pieces here and there, but we're so scattered. It's its like everybody went somewhere, but nobody mm -hmm. went everywhere and um, into one spot, right? Like, and it's, it's, it's kind of sad. It makes me so sad to think about Twitter now. And how do we get that audience back to a platform? Mm -hmm. um, because there's so many now and there were so many like when Twitter exploded um, all these other ones popped up and they thought okay we're the one we're the one uh, uh, I remember uh, that yeah uh, I was part of that <laughs> right. okay uh, threads here's my account okay go um, yeah. but there hasn't been anything like that and so I think that like sh Twitter or X needs to shut down mm -hmm. it needs to be run to the ground and then from the ashes there needs to be this beautiful X butterfly come back up and turn into Twitter again. Yeah. And be like, it's the new Twitter. And right. Because they got rid of it, the name, we can rebrand Twitter. And I think if, if that happened, it would come back and it would really be like, Hey, I'll, I'll give that another shot. Mm -hmm. as Absolutely. Long as, not, as long as it's not musky, I'm in there. Then yeah, you can sign me up too. And then I'll reinstate that. As a as a as platform, I will coach gladly. Yeah. Coach, you know, and and be on the ground floor again of a platform that I was so proud to be a part of back in the day. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So I'm curious though, because as a hard you know fan myself, hard author, uh, part of the queer community, literally eat, breathe, sleep, uh, scary, right? A anything spooky. Um, as someone who wants to learn more about the origins of Halloween through you, that's where you come in as your persona as an educator. I'd love to speak more about that learn how you can grow your persona, so forth and so on. But I feel, uh, in answer to my own question, I feel that potentially, maybe not 100%, but please correct me if I'm wrong, uh, having been in the business longer than I have, you know, as far as writing and uh, with your career, um, I feel that the horror community moved primarily to Instagram and with the reviews and, you know, getting funding and, all these marketing tactics can, that can be utilized uh, within the community itself. How do you feel about Instagram? Are you on that um, full time? Are you starting these conversations or attempting to? I mean, like the floor is yours about that platform. Oh, I love, I love Instagram. I think 99% of my interactions are through Instagram. And I, I really think that it is 
right now the best platform for what I think what I'm doing and what I'm seeing others do. Um, I still haven't seen the, the a lot of the creators from Twitter move to Instagram, and if they have, they haven't kept their handles. But yeah, it is it is the platform for me um, because it is more visual, and as a visual artist, I'm a graphic designer. Sure. Uh, it it really appeals to me to see the visual first, um, but it's creative, right? And then all the little videos and the reels and the, it's just a, it's a, such a wonderful amalgamation of all the other sites of the tick has a little bit of TikTok, It has a little bit of this. It has a little bit of that. It is like the buffet of social media. Yeah. I mean, I, I absolutely love it. I find a lot of uh, between more so Facebook joining uh, the retro horror film buffs, uh, you, you know, um, um, uh, pages on Facebook and then joining, you know, the podcasters uh, of America, the queer, uh, you know, groups on, on Instagram. Amazing. But I really would love a conversation about, you know, the gay coding of horror movies, number one. And we are finally getting great independent queer horrors films now, I yeah. think because of the landscape we're living through politically and everything else. But in your opinion, where, if any place, do you in particular, Senor Scary, see the marketing, you know, um, the marketing of the queer or gay coding in, in horror films. Like what, what's your wish list and, and how do you feel about that? Um, just going uh, forward. I mean, it's, it's, um, it is, it is a wonderful new world um, with a quick, with a quickening demise of movie theaters and <laughs> yeah. pole films and um, all the studios and streaming becoming the number one thing. What we're getting is really strong uh, VOD video on demand releases. And with that is going to be a lot of, uh, I've seen a lot of independent theater uh, out there, you know, movies coming out and those independent voices, a lot of them are queer and a lot of there's, there's like, Shutter, uh, the 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 streaming service Shutter, mm -hmm. um, their one of their programmers, I believe. Um, well, I shouldn't say that he, I believe that he really loves gay films uh -huh. because he programs a lot of gay horror films that I never have heard of or seen or they're not talked about a lot. Mm -hmm. And all the websites for horror films like bloody disgusting and mm -hmm. uh um oh my gosh they're all coming uh dread uh, dread central and all these mm -hmm. other big they're all making really good strides at having at least one gay podcast one gay writer one gay uh influencer on their staff that is constantly uh promoting these things horror queers at um bloody disgusting for example they have a podcast they work now for bloody disgusting they do uh, features for them yeah and they really kind of keep that content uh in the forethought of uh of horror movie fans um and there is there i mean yeah then there's the, <laughs> All the the former gay coding of films has really become just gay films now. Mm -hmm. um, there, um, it's 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 prolific. And like when you look at what Ryan Murphy has done with TV series, Ooh, uh, yes, it's unabashed. Like we're queer and we're horror and we we're we're loving it, right? It's um, yes, his shows are a mess, but it's, it's they're <laughs> gay centric, and for that I will watch them. Damn it, um, but. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm very excited that uh, the the years have gone by where characters used to possibly be gay and they they have a nuance about being gay or something about their mannerisms of touching their ear and that sort of coded them as being gay. Now they're just like, dude, I'm gay. What do you want? Mm -hmm. Like it's so out there and it's so clear and it's it's um it's it's a it's a brand new age for gay youth who see these uh examples and say oh okay we're we're all the same we're and it should be it should be and we need more of that what would you do to change uh having more than one person or one podcast or one creative on a staff to have more of that representation for the community within the horror um you know sense i mean that's a that's a that's a tough one right because having one is better than having none sure and, um it's it's good to start somewhere and why isn't there a gay horror website? Like there's these huge gaping holes that where people say everything's been done. We don't need anything else. <laughs> um, we need a gay horror website. That's as big as bloody disgusting. That's as, um, you know, as prolific as these other uh, podcasters are to, to really 
bring it all and centralize it. And like, if there was something like that, if there was a queer horror uh, website that, you know, was a um, an aggregate and had writers and I, I would be on that site all the time. And so would a lot of other people. Sure. Um, but again, we always are fighting that, that stigma of what's well, only 10%. It's only ten percent of the of the public that that's gay. So it's only you're only gonna get ten percent audience. I'm like, mm, no, I don't think that's true. I think there's more. But the gays, uh, historically speaking, have more disposable income, right? If they're mm. not partnered or if they don't have children, they could be investing maybe or have more time to put into this. I think yeah. that would be unstoppable. That's just my real time response to what you had to say. How do you feel about that? If if you yeah. actually came together and created this this uh, platform or yeah. this, oh, uh, absolutely, yeah. yeah. If I ever saw a Kickstarter that said, "Hey, help us launch the, um, you know, this gay website like Gaily Dreadful, for example," um, he has such a good following. He had a huge following on Twitter. Mm-hmm. Um, I think he just launched uh, Instagram last year or the year before, but uh, huge voice in the community, and he sure. pulled all these people with him and to him. I'm like, this should be like the massive central place. Yes. Um, and it, it it just doesn't exist yet. Yet. It should. Yet. It should. Are you willing to, or do you, have you thought about this? I'm sure you have uh, based off of our conversation the other night, but you know, now publicly, um, have you thought about Senor Scary becoming one of those websites that's going to be unstoppable? I mean, in the Latino uh, horror space and Halloween, sure. Like, there's mm-hmm. nothing else like this. There's no other, at least not that I found. There very could well be. The world is a very wide place, and so is the sure. web. Um, but uh, I haven't found a Latino-themed um, kind of place. And even though my site is not really Latino-themed yet, like fully, like mm-hmm. I'm, I'm just now starting to lean into it of like, how do I make that more Latino? Right. Um, it, it it it's poised to do something. I don't know what it's poised to do, but it's going to do something soon. Mm-hmm. Very uh. soon. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. What, when you were growing up, we're going to switch gears for a second. Mm. What was your favorite Halloween themed movie? Not ha- the Halloween series, although it could be, but mm. what, uh, what was the, the initial um, inspo, the inspiration for, for your obsession, which film? Oh boy. Um, I mean, the the uh, the earliest horror film that I remember seeing was the ABC broadcast of The Exorcist when I was seven Ooh. years old. Okay. And they had changed some of the scenes for broadcast TV. Sure. And my mom let me watch it. Um, I don't know why, but she did. And uh, that was the first movie I, I, I saw. But the first that one, that, the one that I remember as like my favorite young growing up, was a uh, poltergeist i love oh, scary wow. ghost movies and uh, haunted house and to think that your you know quaint suburban house could be infested by you know these monsters and these demons and these things it, it can happen right here mm-hmm. uh, i thought that was a very scary kind of thing so i would probably go with those but i mean i have like 120 from the 80s that i love uh Fright we'll night. have to hop offline and, mm, and I have yeah, to get like, those, uh, that list I from you. <laughs> I can give you a list. Actually, there's yeah. a list on my. There's actually a list on my website. Hmm. Okay, everybody, tune into the website. <laughs> check that list out, and let's have another conversation in a few months. Um. If if <laughs> let's let's completely flip the script on its head, uh, or its gravestone, if you will, and we're going to ask you if you were to watch The Exorcist today for the first time. How would you market it on which platform and why? Hmm. I know I'm completely going off script. We're, we're just going to see what you come up with. No, that, that's good because this is, this is a, uh, it's a drama. It's a drama first, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Because most of it is a drama. Um, so you'd have to sell it along the A24 lines, um, mm-hmm. uh, the studio A24. Uh, you'd have to really hide its inner mysteries. So the head turning, all that, that they use in the original uh, promotion, you have to hold all that back. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you really have to sell it um, as this um, elevated horror film. Um, you'd want to go for the platforms. Um, 
you know, it has a little girl. So you'd want to go for younger, like obviously TikTok, you'd have the TikTok uh, videos. Mm -hmm. You'd have the, um, uh, the Instagram reels with the, with some of the scenes of her and her mother uh, fighting. Uh, the, of course, the, there's a scene with the Ouija board and the, the flames coming <laughs> yeah. out. And uh, so those would be all the teasers. So you put all those teasers across um, the visual uh, video um, sites that the, in, as reels, not posts. So yeah, I think that's how I would probably approach it as a non uh, movie marketer. Mm -hmm. No, and that's and I asked that purposely because that's what we do here. We build personas, and you just created an entirely different persona on most of the social media platforms, which is fabulous. Especially, how would you market it to the the, the queer community though, or, or or on your website? Like once that came out of those mm -hmm. teasers on on the reels and on TikTok. I mean, the the closest thing that you'd have to the Latino community in terms of that movie, it's its religious aspect. Um, Latinos are very religious and typically and that that angle of of um of possession is huge right sure uh, latinos and and uh, there's there's been all these wonderful movies like veronica on netflix and um the possession sells latinos and mm -hmm. if a movie is marketed if a, if a movie ever comes out that is about possession it's going to be marketed first and foremost to, to latinos sure because it's that it's that embedded um psychology of uh demonic possession and angels and good versus evil. Okay. And, and there's a lot you can do within the, the, the community of influencers on, on social media as well to get the word out about or reviews, previews, mm -hmm. uh, even what all the studios are doing now, which drives me crazy. But I also am here for it where they're selling these buckets. They're, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> trying to cash in on these movies even before they launched terrifier three is coming out, you know, in uh, October, which I think they should have waited till at least Thanksgiving or Christmas to launch that, in my opinion, but they're selling these buckets and they're marketing these huge productions and selling yeah. these buckets and then people are buying them up. But again, that's a whole different conversation. So uh, to change gears again for a moment, you know, we're almost at the end, but you know, is there a difference in what Latin X or Latin, the Latin community is looking for in, 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 the holiday and you know media and movies or that that you've seen a trend in uh or at least that you would like to see going forward um well uh, first of all representation uh -huh. so if you're gonna market a, anything towards us we we have to be included in it and not just as side characters mm -hmm. like it has to be a, a focus on latino community uh and like truly uh uh, a, a true representation. Sure. Uh, Curse of La Llorona that came out a couple of years ago uh, was, you know, the, here's this icon of Latino folklore and um, the Latinos in that film were secondary characters. Mm -hmm. And this whole thing was happening to a white woman. And I'm like, come on, guys. Like, and it was heavily, it was heavily promoted to the Latino community. And yet we were still pushed to the side. So if it's going to be for us, it has to include us in a significant way. Right. Um, I'm always looking, I'm very suspicious of, the, of of movies and shows and things that are marketed towards Latinos because I'm like, okay, where where is the Latino in here? Mm. I see somebody there in the background, but is that it? That That's all you got for me? Yeah. Um, so um, it, it's not enough to just have a, a, a brown wash. It has to have a meaningful connection to the, to the Latino community. Do you think that there will be more openness or more of a breakthrough for the community in horror in the near future, or at least in the future, you know, year, two, the years, five years or so? Oh I yeah. Mean, I I mean, so, but, but what's your hope for that? Yeah. I mean, the, the Latinos are a huge uh, audience of horror movies. Like when you look at the breakdowns of, who's buying these tickets on the, I forget the name of the platforms, but they do breakdowns by uh, along ethnic lines. Mm -hmm. And you'll see when there's a horror release, like 60% of it is Latino. Wow. Um, we love horror movies. We love, we, that we're a deeply spiritual and deeply connected to, um, you know, all things spooky. And, and, and th there's something about us that uh, as a culture that really embraces this, um, this side of uh, this darker side mm -hmm. that um, I don't see with, with uh, my brothers on the other side. Interesting. 
we're almost at the end. Again, we would love to have you on again as a guest, of course, and see how you're evolving with your persona on social and your website. We wish you all the luck in the world. But because it's almost spooky season, well, it is spooky season technically, at least for you know horror, you know uh, fans <laughs> like us. But what horror story or ghost story or movie keeps you up at night currently, or that you've experienced yourself? Real, right? Imagine that real, right? Because you choose. Hey, it's a choose your own adventure uh, answer. I mean, the, <laughs> the November, the November event is keeping me up at night. Literally, mm -hmm. um, the uh, this this election is sure. true horror. It's it's sure. interesting. Um, you know, um, many years ago, um, Ryan Murphy did a show called Cult. I was just um, thinking that, mm -hmm. and it's like it's such a it's such a foreshadowing of events that may happen. It's kind of crazy, mm -hmm. but. Um, there's so many stories that, that keep me up at night. And, um, um, lately it's the, the, um, the, um, um, I would say space, um, how we're becoming more aware of what's out there in space mm -hmm. and, uh, how it, um, could affect us, um, in, in a, in the near future. Um, all these crazy theories about inner space and uh, dimensional travels and all these things. I'm like, there's these crazy theories you can read about on Reddit about are ghosts real or are they just from another dimension? And mm -hmm. uh, it's um, scientists going, you know, Oh, well there's this thing called dark matter in space and we don't know what it is, but it affects us all. And it's affecting mm -hmm. the universe and it's expanding. And I'm like, well, what is this dark matter? Like what? Mm. What is what is happening with this? This universe. Sure. We the, the more we know, the less we know, and that's exactly what any kind of study in paranormal is. Like the more you think you know about something, the less you actually do. And there's no proof; it's all theory. Sure. Um, and I don't know. To me, it's all like the same thing, even though they're they're very different sciences, right? The, mm -hmm. the pseudoscience of paranormal versus the, the space science. <laughs> true story absolutely so we are at the end of today's episode but i'd love to give you the floor and a platform to explain out there in tv land uh where we can find you on all the socials and talk more about how we can find you on your website absolutely um you can find me at senyorscary.com uh that's my main halloween website it's kind of a repository for everything i've done in halloween all my likes, all my favorite movies. People say, hey, do you know any scary movies? Yes, yes, I do. Here's a list. <laughs> uh, when people say, how did you make that giant 15-foot spider? Hey, here's a, let me click to you. You know, Here's a click, the, the, uh, a link that you can click right through. Right. <laughs> uh, so it's a, it's a nice repository of everything I've ever done. Um, and it's, it's, it's such an, if somebody doesn't know anything about Halloween or like, or is interested and has never really understood why we celebrate it, there's a little tab on there that says how we celebrate or why we celebrate. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a really nice education on socials at social, uh, um, all the platforms, like I said, it's at senior scary Jerry. Um, you'll find me across Instagram. Most, uh, I'm mostly on, on Instagram, but I do have a, a TikTok and, um, YouTube and a Vimeo and a Pinterest and, uh, Oh gosh. Who knows what else? I've forgotten. You're you're well connected on the web, is what you're saying, and that's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> that's per that, that that's why we're here talking about everything social media. So, Senor Scary, yeah. thank you so much for your time and for your input today. And everybody out there in TV land, stay spooky and tune in weekly to the Pride and Promotion Podcast. Go forth with pride, and we'll talk soon. Take care. Thank you. That's a wrap for today's episode of Pride and Promotion. We hope you're leaving with fresh insights and inspiration on how to harness the power of diversity and innovation in your marketing strategies. Don't forget to subscribe and stay tuned for our next episode, where we've got more exciting topics and expert guests lined up just for you. Until then, I'm Joe Federico. You can find me at www.jfedericomarketing.com and I want to help you go forth with pride and make your mark in the world of marketing.